Hi everyone, this video is part of Macquarie University's coding tutorials, and now that we're set up for the most part, we will practice creating and calling our own function. I'll be doing this in Eclipse, but I would recommend that once you finish following along with me, you also try to do this in Visual Studio Code so you can get some practice with it. We'll create a program that includes a function called sumOdd, which takes an array of integers as a parameter and returns the sum of all odd numbers in the array. This function will be called in a client program where we can pass in our input arrays. Let's create a new Java project. Going to File, New, Java Project. Let's call this one Practice and click Finish. We'll then right click our new project, going to New and then Class, and let's call this one Main. Notice that this could be anything. It's just sometimes convention to name our class Main with a capital M if we don't have a better name for it and if it's the main class in our project. We'll take the public static void main string array args method option, click Finish, and the class is created. Before we change the code in the main method, let's first create the sumOdd function. We'll start writing this code outside the main method but inside the class, just before the last curly bracket. We'll make this function public by default. In this case, we will need the word static. We'll talk more about static in a later video. Then we need the return type. Since we'll be summing odd numbers, they will all be ints, not floats, since numbers with decimals are not odd or even. So we can put a return type of int. Then we need the function name, sum odd, an opening bracket, and then our parameter. In this case, we have just one input, an array of integers, and let's call it r. Now let's think about the algorithm we need. Let's write each of the steps as comments. By breaking it into sub-steps, tackling each sub-problem will be a lot easier. You might think this function is not too complex, but it's a good idea to get into the habit of always writing the algorithm before launching into writing code. First, we will need a way to store the sum we need to return. Then, we will need to iterate through the array. As we iterate through, we need to check if each item is odd. If it is odd, we will add it to our sum. Once we've looped through the whole array, we want to return our sum. Now that we have the subproblems, let's fill out each one. As we do, let's identify the tools we need. For our first step, we need storage. A sum is just one item, so we can create a variable. When creating the function signature, we realize that a sum of odd numbers will be an int, and because this is the sum we'll be returning at the end, we can make it an int. Let's call it sum and initialize it to zero. Then to iterate through an array, we need a loop. Let's create the loop structure first before thinking about the subcomments. Let's create the standard for loop structure for iterating through an array. We start with creating our index variable i, declaring it as an int, and initializing it to zero. Follow that with a semicolon. Now we need the termination condition. We only want to keep going if i is a valid index. That is, if it is less than the length of the array. To get the length of the array in code, we need to use r.length, because r is the parameter name in our function signature. Finally, another semicolon and the incrementer. We need the index to go up by 1 each time. Let's close the bracket and put both the opening and curly brackets in now so that we maintain proper indentation. Indented on the next line, let's write the code to check if the current item is odd. Since we're saying the word if, it's a hint that we'll need a condition. Let's build out the structure for an if statement. Now let's think of the condition. We'll need to use r of i to get the item. Now with conditional logic, if a number is even, it's divisible by 2. So if it's odd, it must not be divisible by 2. We can use the mod symbol to check if a number is divisible by another number and use 2 since that's what we're dividing with. Since we're looking for odd numbers, we want the result to not equal 0. Remember, the exclamation mark means not. That's it for the condition. Let's move on to the next line inside of the curly brackets. If we're up to here in the code, it means the item is odd. So we'll need to add it to the sum. Sum plus equals the item, r of i. Now we exit step 2, so out of the loop completely, and write return sum. Close it off with a semicolon, and our function is done. This function takes an array of integers as a parameter, and uses a for loop to iterate through each element of the array. Within the loop, we use an if statement to check if the current element is odd, and if so, we add it to the sum. Finally, we return the sum. Next, let's call the function from our main method. To do this, we'll need to create an array, Call the sumOdd function with the array we created as input, storing the result, then finally print the result from the function call. To create the array, let's type int array data and then put any numbers into it. For this video, I'll use the numbers 1, 7, 2, 9, 3, and 8. The odd numbers here are 1, 7, 9, and 3, so we would expect the result 20. Now let's create an int variable, call it sum, and initialize it to the result of the function call of sumOdd 
passing in our data array. Finally, we write a print statement. It's a good idea when printing to also include a bit of explanation of what value is being printed. So we'll write sum of odd numbers, including a colon and leaving a space at the end inside the string. Concatenate onto that the sum using the plus symbol. Now we can run the client program in Eclipse to see the output of the program, which should be sum of odd numbers 20. And that's what we see in the console. At this point, you should feel a bit more comfortable running a program in Eclipse and have some insight into how to create and call a function in Java. Again, feel free to try this in Visual Studio Code based on the instructions from our last video. In the next video, we'll talk about the types of errors and warnings we'll encounter when making our programs. See you then.